Yeah, so that's a very amazing um, avenue to make additional income. And it's something that they've actually incorporated in most social media platforms now. So not even YouTube, TikTok. I think TikTok is the most popular one. But if you genuinely want to get something done, if you step out, search for people in your age range, connect with them, or just step out, network, you would get something, you would find something. So that's how I say it. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to not have everything figured out. And like I said just a few seconds ago, leverage connections, leverage relationships, right? So I think the greatest gift God has given to us is the gift of people. Okay, so hi, Somedi. This is uh, really great to have you on board. I am George Ibuonu. I'm the CEO of Banana Crystal. Uh, we do peer-to-peer -peer trading of USD with any currency anywhere in the world. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and talk a little bit more about your background, what you do, and uh, all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Firstly, I want to say um, I'm really honored to be here. It's an amazing opportunity. Thank you for having me. So about myself, right? I That's very difficult to quantify. But if I were to limit it or shrink it, I would just describe myself as a creative. My name is Sumi Bilio. I am a creative, a makeup artist, um, yeah, YouTuber based in Lagos, Nigeria. That summarizes it for the most part. So, yeah. So what can you share what inspired you to become a YouTuber and social media influencer? Okay. okay, what inspired me? So to be very honest, to be very, very honest, because I do like to be honest, the one thing that really inspired me, because something I've always wanted to do for a while, I've always been that person that has had some sort of creativity on the inside of them, but I never had an audience or people that cared for that side of me. And so I was really moved by the desire to have a community. It was basically community. I was very much younger then, about, <laughs> about 17. But I just knew I wanted to post videos and I wanted people that cared about me to watch it and to care for what I was posting. So it was not a thing of, oh, I even wanted to make a certain amount of money or it was about the money. It was just the, the desire to have a community of people that cared for my content. So yeah, that was what really inspired me to start up YouTube. Wow, so you started really early. And then um, yeah. how were you able to juggle making videos, editing them, building an online presence, and staying on top of your studies all together at that very young age? I, I love that. You sort of assumed everything was balanced properly. <laughs> it wasn't. So it was very difficult, right? And I think for the most part, okay, for the most part, it was easy up until final year in school you know final year doing a lot of things taking on more projects more assignments and then on top of that i was an executive in my department so i had so many responsibilities i was working as well right so i really just had to come to a place where i trained myself to be disciplined with time because i i was always very free with my time not necessarily caring where it's going so as opposed to before where I might be on my phone scrolling on social media doing nothing, I realized those times could count in being poured into another era because I was doing so many things. One thing I also did that really helped me tremendously was being able to also let go of things, right? So I, I think there's this mentality where people feel like you're doing so many things, so it means you're being productive. You're here, you're here, you're here. and it took me a while to realize that that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes you can be wearing yourself down, just think, and then you become counterproductive. You're not doing anything, but you're everywhere. So I really had to come to a point where I prioritized, understood which carried more weight, and then I just prioritized that. So that really helped me throughout school. Say, for example, I had classes. I, typically, my videos take a sit down like this type of content kind of content we're filming now 
say if I were to film, I'll have my camera and I'll be filming and talking to the camera. But I realized I'm in school. I will not have the luxury of doing that all the time. So I had to shift my content to more so vlogs. So it was just finding what works for me. I started vlogging more, so taking people along my days in school as a student, sharing my experiences. And then at night, when people are sleeping, I'll be editing. <laughs> right? So it was just sacrifices and understanding what worked for me. That's, I mean, that's really great uh, insight, uh, sharing how you were able to navigate and, um, you know, walk through all the challenges. Um, yeah. Now, you know, uh, with YouTube, I don't know if it's a profitable venture for you. Uh, what would you say? <laughs> how do you, how, how would you quantify it? Because a lot of um, uh, yeah. women are looking at different ways to generate revenue and they see people uh, like yourself doing YouTube videos and um, um, maybe you can share a little bit more on the profitability of the business venture and how that works and all that kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, good stuff. So I, anyone around me or anyone who cares to listen knows I have told them YouTube is so profitable. I don't think people even understand the amount of money that is sitting on this platform alone, right? And it's a thing of you being the first contact, right? How I like to paint it is in the olden days or back in the days, companies mm -hmm. would reach out to agency, marketing agencies to get their product or to get their name out there, right? And now in this time, the money they would have paid those agencies is coming to the direct creators. Do you understand? And so yes. imagine them paying a creative or an agency then 10,000, 10 million naira to get your brand out there now you've cut okay. through all those middlemen. men you are the person that gets the brand out there because you have that audience that agencies once had and so people don't see it in that sense youtube is so profitable i i tell literally anybody that cares listen get on youtube film that video post it right and the money that is on youtube is not even limited to ads because most people think oh it's the ads that brings in the real money no the real money on YouTube is in collaborations with brands, partnerships, mm -hmm. affiliate marketing and stuff like that. Do you understand? So yes. YouTube is profitable. I would advise anyone that cares to listen to definitely get their hands in that. So yeah. Yeah, so we're I guess you've graduated from college now. Over yes, the years have. now, you are you already now you come out of school and you don't have to be looking for a job as per se, but you already have you created your own revenue stream. So maybe yes. you can talk a little bit more about 
how, how what what you encourage women to do in general because there's this thing that a lot of women feel like you know uh it's a man's world there's yeah. no there are no opportunities for me the best case is just to find a rich guy or just become a housewife or something <laughs> of that nature <laughs> you know? yeah. so it's it's really it's really kind of uh strange you know but that's what that's what we see happening okay so um in respect to that i think women limit we, we tend to limit ourselves a lot right we tend to limit ourselves a lot because women are capable of so much in the sense that even just the very structure of man and woman men are, uh, I, I beg to differ but they <laughs> tend to focus on one thing and get it done. But whereas for a woman, she can be a YouTuber, a mom, a makeup artist. She can do so many things at once and get it done. And it's just our structure. So I think yeah. it's it's so bad that we limit ourselves to just being married. Like that's all it is about a person. And so for any woman that might be watching this or anyone at all that is, feels they don't have access to certain leverage or anything i literally promise you the way the world has been formed right now it is so easy for literally like you said which is why i love the idea of teleoma campaign you can be in your house and be making money there are so many jobs available there is even content creation i don't think people leverage content creation as much anybody and everybody can be a content creator right mr george you can be a content creator as yeah. much as the ceo right <laughs> literally yes it can be an aspect of your life where you even show people behind the scenes of what it's like being a ceo because people want to know people people aspire to be a ceo and so content is just basically capturing and creating a story out of whatever is currently ongoing so i for example now i'm out of school people want to know what's going on next in my life somebody that is even confused on what to do as a woman that could be content so you could yeah. project that and say, I'm going to be figuring this out within six months. Come along with me on that journey. So I think people just need to see opportunity in every situation, right? Is that in any situation I am, I can create content out of that and I can monetize that content. Yeah. So if I'm at oh, home now, yeah. say, for example, because I think here a lot of women come to me and say things like they don't have any skill, they don't have any talent the way I do, or they're not as talented or something. And all I like to say is, no one was born or no one was made empty. God did not make anyone and he just sent you into the world with nothing. We all have <laughs> something that makes us stand out. For some people, they are extra smart. For some people, they are good at communicating and they can hold conversations. All those things are things that can be monetized, in my opinion. People want to hear people talk. People want to get solutions to problems. So I think women really have to step out of how we currently see ourselves and see ourselves as way much more we we have we are limitless honestly right you can yeah. do literally anything and i just think we should stop focusing on the limitations resources um being a woman obviously it is difficult i can't even lie it is difficult getting certain things done as a woman in this world that we live in but in like, as much what, as what, like what are certain things then an example would be, I was into videography full-time for a particular period, right? And it's a passion I have, right? I'm good at storytelling and I, I'm really good at handling the camera. But <laughs> the, the people I was working with, they didn't respect me as a woman. And so that sort of, I would not say completely killed or shut down, but it did reduce my interest in that field to a very large degree. Because people I was interacting with were mostly men and not to say men don't encounter a similar or similar problems men in that industry but it's just the the tendency is higher for women right so it's yes. a thing of i don't i'm not trying to project on men or anything but <laughs> <laughs> let me just cut it here all i'm trying to say is we should stop looking at the limitations whenever you think of a limitation there's always a solution to so just be solution oriented i'm at home now Think of the lockdown time. People were making money during lockdown. They were not going anywhere. They were people making money. Funny enough, most content creators became content creators during the lockdown. So it was that time that they said, oh, I don't know anything. I'm at home. Let me be making videos. And now they're making thousands of dollars. So it's just a thing of 
seeing opportunity in every situation. That's how I see it. And that's the advice I have for any woman currently. Yeah. So like, even when you look at the content create, creation, um, I like to break it down into like, there are three major buckets. You can either be educating or you mm -hmm. can be entertaining or you can just be documenting your life, you know? So if your life is very boring, maybe you need to be educating or entertaining. <laughs> but if your, your life is exciting and you're doing a lot of stuff, you can just showcase your day-to-day -day activities. That's basically a documentary of, of you and people will find it fascinating. I'm all yeah. over anywhere in the world. I, I had a, I was looking at some lady's uh, video channel. She lives in a village somewhere in Africa and her video was actually very entertaining. She had millions of views on it just because People were, were fascinated to see the village day to day village life, like somebody in the village living, waking up in the morning, having all the nights. Just the it was kind of it was less <laughs> more engaging than even the city life because most people yeah. are used to city life. Right. You know? So she just went documented about documenting her day, and it was kind of fascinating to see that. And then other people like yourself that are good at entertainment as well as educating, you know. So or you can combine all three. You can educate, entertain, and document at the same time. So it's all part of. Uh, uh, content creation you know yeah so so and also you what you mentioned about women being uh multifaceted uh, like i like yeah. to say um that's a skill set that is missing and what we try to do uh that's that's one of the reasons why we like this telewoman campaign and we like uh women coming on our side because when women join the platform or even women working for us they are more able to see the big picture as well as the details so they can you know, some men are more linear. They might be very, very structural and linear and not able to see the overall or not have the emotional intelligence that women typically come naturally yeah. with. Just being able to sense what is there and what other people are saying and what they need to do. So one of the things I, I'm, I, I like to get from you, and I've said it on different um, other uh, interviews and podcasts, is in school, women were in my class and they were at the top of the class. They were very bright. You see them from high school, you know, secondary school in Nigeria, high school here in the US, and then university, colleges, everything's the same thing. And then you get into the workforce and the women just kind of disappear or you don't see them anymore. <laughs> so what happened to that period? Because you are going through that right now. You just got out of school. So what, yeah. what happens when you leave school from the way? How come women just disappear suddenly from, from the... <laughs> and they were very you know bright? You know? I really, really love that question and that is so true because I've never actually thought of it that way but it's actually so true because like you said I'm actually just casting my mind back throughout school I was top of class as well for the most part yeah. and um, yeah it was always women but when you come to the workforce suddenly it's men I think it's a thing of also society right and what you perceive as a woman so for the most part, women are taught to, I feel like, especially in Nigeria, I can't really speak for outside the country and how other women are, but what I know from my country is women are sort of trained to get married. It's like you are trained to get married. So the education bit is just a necessary fulfillment. It's like, oh, you might as well do education. And since you are disciplined from, from when we are young, to always get things done and be diligent because you're going to marry, you're going to have to carry those things, they carry it into education, which is why they always talk of the class. So when boys are very all over the place, women are, the girls are already focused, they know what they want, they know what they should be doing, right? And so when you're done with the school bits and you're not in the real world, do they actually want to pursue a career? It's not a lot of women you find that are career oriented or actually want to go through with that. Most women just settle. At the end of the day like okay i have done my bit this is where they said it should stop for me get married and that's about it so it's only a few that break out of that matrix and be like oh no i would actually want something more for myself which is why i think you now end up seeing more men in the workforce <laughs> as you get older as opposed to women so yeah that's what, that what i can see well, i guess that combina combining because women can already do that they can combine both but mm -hmm. it's almost like but society it, pushes more to stay at home and then when you come out of the whole raising of kids 10 15 years later you're kind of outdated or you feel or i guess maybe women feel like they have lost their skill set or they have lost their desire or now you can't go and start from the beginning anymore because now you don't have the experience and you you're already maybe you're older now and now you go back and start from from rock bottom and be dealing with people that are probably almost half your age at that point yeah, 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 yeah.
yeah, so yeah, you're right. You know, and so I, with you now, like, what are you seeing now as progress for women in terms of entrepreneurship? So, like, women starting their own businesses or doing their own thing, because that seems to be more of the trend now, rather than go and join a workforce that has maybe male-dominated and is very hierarchical and um, the politics that are there are not necessarily the kind of politics that women will play like you know what i mean by that like guys after work might get together go somewhere have a drink and that's where the networking and all that happens women might not necessarily be drinking or wanting to be in that kind of environment uh, or, you know or might find that a, a colossal waste of their time <laughs> sitting on there and discussing <laughs> politics sports or any of that stuff but that's how men would bond so I guess, in your opinion, what, what are you seeing now as uh, the trend? Yeah, what you said is actually so true. And I think the, uh, what I'm trying to explain now is women, the rise of women starting businesses and wanting to own things. I think it might come from a place of women now trying to overcompensate, right? So if you go into the workforce <laughs> where you have a lot of men, right? And, you know, contrary to popular opinion, it's not so easy to break through in a room where there are so many men because I like to, I, I genuinely believe in men being men, women being women, right? I believe we all have our traditional roles, first of all. Men were generally made to be more of leaders, more, and it's not to say I was a leader, I've always been a leader wherever I found myself, but that tendency is inbuilt in men, right? To lead, to always be ahead of things. So I feel like with women, why we're suddenly seeing things where it's like they're starting businesses, starting so many things, it's just the desire to want to feel like you have your own thing. You own your own thing. You're not under any, you're not um, subject to any man, which uh, is a good thing. I, I do stand for it, the empowerment of women and everything, but... I really, really, really believe even a lot of the people I know that currently have businesses, I'm sorry to say they have no business starting businesses because not everyone is a, not everyone is meant to have a business. You but it's just an idea that, oh, if I can have this for myself, I don't need to work for any man. I don't need to be under any man. I mean, I'm saying man in the general term, any man's control, any man's um supervision. I can do my own thing. So is is this idea or this desire for independence and empowerment right but at the end of the day i really do think they might be overcompensating in that sense because some women genuinely would thrive in an office environment but they've robbed themselves of that and are starting businesses that they are failing at because they don't want to feel like oh they're working with men or for men do you understand so that's how i basically see it yes you're absolutely right there because it's um starting a business is not as easy as most people think but uh, I, I like to say most things, you need both energies. You need the feminine um, energy and the masculine energy. And I think our businesses have been, uh, at least globally, is more tuned towards the masculine energy in there. And so if you look at nature and look at everything, you have the yin and the yang, you have positive mm. and negative, you have feminine, masculine, you have Shakti, Shiva, you know, in every tradition you have that yeah. uh, male and female energy that you need in anything and when you have that complete picture even when you would look at raising kids you have a father in the process and if you have a father in the house and the mother the kids usually turn out better not in yeah. all cases but the majority of the time because of that balance of the male and female energy so in the workforce and businesses and everything and um, i think we're now getting into the i don't know how much you know in, in astrology and all that but we're getting to the aquarian age where the feminine <laughs> energy is coming back in you know, it has been male dominated for so many years or so many centuries now. So we're we're doing that transition, and so we're, we're seeing things changing all around the all around the world. And um, so this is good news for you as a woman because we're entering the feminine energy is coming back in into everything. You know, I, I've actually noticed that, and I can testify. There's, it's almost like there's a sudden rise in women wanting to step into femininity. Right? It's like for the most part, women have always been, oh, I'm going to be a man, not a man, but they want to show that they can match up to a man. But now like, women are like, oh, no, I'm going to just take the seat back. I'm going to be at home and I'm good here. You are right, actually. Yeah. yeah. 
So now, um, one of the things that we do on Banana Crystal, and and because uh, we see a lot of women creating nice content online, and including mm. yourself, and all we see people doing is like, like my video, like my video. But at the end of the day, we're all about economic empowerment. So people liking your video does not necessarily put any money in your pockets. <laughs> so, you know, so uh, one of the things that we've done on, uh, on Banana Crystal, we've created a pay button or a, a payment link that allows anybody anywhere in the world to receive payments. So if you think about most payment systems, right, they work in one country, maybe they work in Nigeria, they don't work in Ghana next door, or they will work in one region like in the US and, and Canada, but they won't work in uh, Europe or in uh, Central uh, Central America or somewhere else. So yeah. we have a pay button or pay system that allows anybody anywhere in the world to pay you. They can pay you and then you can convert it you know, into your local currency. And uh, we're seeing we are seeing that that is now a lot of creators are putting that on their website or on their social media content, you know, um, so that at least you can get it, you can get tipped. You know, if somebody, if they really like your content, maybe they might as well tip you, even if it's $1 or whatever it is, than just clicking the like button. The like, <laughs> people have been liking forever and hasn't done anything for anybody else. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I wanted to get your opinion on that. What do you think about that, you know, about having to receive tips online? Yeah. as a social media content creator yeah so that's a very amazing um avenue to make additional income and it's something that they've actually incorporated in most social media platforms now so not even youtube tiktok i think tiktok is the most popular one because you can be live streaming or you can live stream and money is entering your account so you have people on a gifting you because maybe they like what you're saying and they are yeah. buying you gifts and those gifts translate to money so say they get you a hat that hat can be like 50 dollars so it goes to your account of 50 dollars and you're making money because they like you and so with youtube youtube actually does have a similar feature but it's not so people don't know about it that's the thing so when you have um you know the the like section of the video with the like the subscribe yeah. you scroll you do see super things so super thanks is basically you tipping the creator so if you tip the creator you click super thanks you can literally give them whatever amount of money you want to give them and that goes as an addition to them just like saying oh nice video have this do you understand but yeah. for some reason people don't know about people don't know about that on youtube right so i guess most people if they can't do that right if you do have your information maybe bank details your collaboration and stuff in your description people do send you money or stuff like that but besides that the only other way people do support is probably resharing or reposting the videos because mm -hmm. i feel like they may feel like oh I, there's nothing i can do no detail is out i can't give to them but you can actually give to creators especially on youtube as well yeah i think there yeah, are people have been trained for just the like and the, just the like button so people don't even look for that anymore over the years <laughs> they've been trained to just subscribe or like and maybe all the youtubers <laughs> say subscribe or like subscribe or like <laughs> Actually, so people actually are... it. <laughs> yeah and then the other challenge that we see also is that people somebody might be in korea and want to tip you but it only has korean uh oh, yeah. and, and so there's no way for them to tip you in the currency or even if they're trying to get to us dollars before they can get to you so one, one of the things that we've done is that allow people to tip in their local currency so wow. that way you can receive it and then you can convert it using our peer-to-peer -peer network from whatever currency so I say for you from Korean won to Naira or to Nigerian Naira or from US dollars to Euros or whatever it is. So yeah. that way people don't have to go out of their way to try to convert or get the money in the look, you know. So that's when the friction comes in. Uh, but you know, if you if you have it such a way that the person can just tip in their local currency, then it becomes very easy for them to to do so without uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the beauty of um of, of having stuff like that so i would say for you now like in, in what advice would you give to women in general now globally not just in nigeria only you know hmm. i would really advise women to leverage now, in terms of economic empowerment so that we you know because you can give advice in marriage in this in that in terms of economic empowerment right I would really, really advise women to just leverage being multifaceted, right? 
just leverage that whatever you can find yourself doing and doing comfortably doing well you can monetize it right so it's not, you don't necessarily there's not there's no good traditional form of making money anymore because the way the world has moved you can literally be doing anything and have money coming into your account right so i just think yeah. women have to see themselves as able to also make money for themselves and able to do things for themselves as well not just rely on a man or a third party to always take care of you you can actually take care of yourself as well right so yeah, just... yeah but, but the point you made here is really really fascinating if you think about it like in the last 20 years the amount of new jobs that have been created did not, did not even exist so like yeah. you know before you had jobs like engineering uh, medicine all this kind of stuff you know then the last 20 years now you have social media manager seo manager content creator this that 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 if you name it i um, ai this and that uh, somebody this uh, uh augmented reality uh, vr and there's just so many new like almost like 100 new <laughs> careers or more have been created in the last uh, few years you know that's kind of really it's it's not as if um and this these things didn't even exist like literally less than 20 years ago most of these jobs or careers didn't even exist so the world is really open right now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's true. i just feel like there's no excuse to say so when i actually when i do meet women that sort of want to sell that pity card i'm like there's no excuse like there's literally no excuse if you are not making money now it's probably because maybe you don't know how to brand yourself or you just genuinely don't want to you just genuinely don't want to so if you do want to, it's just to take the time to think it through and identify that thing that you can sell because people would buy. So yeah. But what you what what some other women might say, okay, yes, it's all fine and dandy for you. You're young, you don't have responsibilities, you don't have kids, you don't have a husband um mm -hmm. to take care of. So maybe that's why you're all positive. So what would you say to those kind of women? Because they uh they might have three or four kids. They have a husband at home. They are kind of bogged down from morning to night with, and it can really be a full time job to take care of even just one kid, talk less of two or three kids. So, what would you say to those kind of women? I would say because I have been privileged to be around people like that. I know a couple people, older people. I talk to older people as well, where it's like maybe time has gone by. You have children. You have responsibilities. I really, really, really just do believe that is where being online and having an online presence now more than ever really matters, right? Yeah. So you don't necessarily think of it. Say a woman got married when she was in her 20s and spent her 20s, 30s, 40s having children, raising children, and now she's suddenly 40, 50, and she wants to get something doing. At that time, no actual physical company, and I mean the regular, the traditional business will be looking for a woman in her 50s to employ. But if you're online, you have so many roles. You can literally do customer success. You can literally be in relations. There are so many things to still do online, which is still what I said, really. There are still jobs available online, right? So I think it's really just a thing of leveraging people. The current connections you probably even have in your life, you probably know people that um, maybe didn't take the route you took and are in better situations you can leverage relationships like that you can still apply online there are so many opportunities and i think it, you can never say there's nothing until you are in the grave i'm sorry that's just how i see it. <laughs> there are opportunities you can go for events you can network and networking literally brings so much right so being at home i think it's just being very intentional because there's a tendency to want to use your current situation and to just wallow and be like oh my system, the system failed me. But if you genuinely want to get something done, if you step out, search for people within your age range, connect with them, go, just step out, network, you would get something, you would find something. So that's how I see it. Yeah, that's really great. I'm glad you, um, you're giving the encouragement so women can feel like they don't have to feel like your time has passed or time has passed you by, but there are always opportunities. And, um, we're really glad to have you here, you know, speaking here and just kind of sharing your words of wisdom. Um, that's, kind of, that's kind of one of the reasons why we have the Tell a Woman campaign and we made it very easy on our end also for women to just log in online and you can work from home from anywhere and not even, even if you have three kids, you know, or four kids, whenever they go to bed, you can always just log in and 
and still do something, you know. So either you start creating content or you come and be a broker on our site or whatever it is, all these things are free. It doesn't cost you anything other than yeah. your, your time or, and the desire for you to want to succeed. So um, before we let you go, any closing thoughts? So maybe you go. thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I actually don't have any closing thoughts. Um, I would just say, maybe I should share something I'm currently learning in this season of my life. Okay, and I think go ahead. I can actually learn from is to really ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to not have everything figured out. And like I said just a few seconds ago, leverage connections, leverage relationships, right? So I think the greatest gift God has given to us is the gift of people. You know somebody that knows somebody. And I think if you come down to actually think of what network is like, it's so crazy. Because somebody beside you can literally know <laughs> Dan Gote or Bill Gates. And because you are looking at them as a regular person, you don't know, right? So it's just being able to speak up, not wallowing. I'm so against wallowing because I've noticed that tendency with women where you just sit down and take whatever comes right so it's very possible for you to decide i want this and i can get this do you understand and so yes. yeah just for that ask for help if you don't know how to go about it and help will come so yeah all right this has been very helpful and very uh informative uh we really we really excited to have you on board now can you, you can share you know your contact your social media channel so if people wanted to reach out to you wanted to join see what you're doing you right. know. okay so um i'm somebilio on every social media platform on youtube instagram tiktok linkedin somebilio um i'm a makeup artist <laughs> i'm available to fly i do travel <laughs> i do travel yes i do makeup professionally for brides for events just generally and that is basically where I focus. So I focus on beauty and content creation and just sort of merging it. So yeah, that's all about me for the most part. So you're multifaceted. Makeup, I'm content, multifaceted. these. Yes. <laughs> I have work for myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's been a pleasure having you on board. <laughs> Thank and, you uh, so much. We'll put your, your links on the show notes so people can reach out to you if they want to. All right. Thank you.